for an entire week, I've been using this Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra instead of my iPhone 15 Pro, and it's been unlike anything I expected. This phone takes the best from iPhone and Android, combining all into one crazy cocktail. You all know me as an iPhone guy, and I have never really been that much into Android. But this year, after switching to the S24 Ultra, I feel right at home. It's crazy how much this phone resembles the iPhone. For example, it too uses a super light and durable titanium frame. What a surprise. Samsung also has a super bright flat display now. The system and UI have been overhauled to feel more smooth and fluid to the point of it not feeling like an Android phone. Even software updates are promised to last seven years, unlike three to four years that we've seen before. The S24 Ultra is the closest thing to the iPhone you can get if you don't want an iPhone. And on top of all those similarities, there are also a ton of AI features that you just don't get on the iPhone, as well as a more versatile camera system that's also been overhauled and improved. Just the S Pen alone feels like enough to tip the scales in the favor of going Samsung. And despite the fact that I really like all the features that this phone has and all the extra capabilities it has on top of all the things my iPhone does, it is still not perfect. And there are things that need some more work. Well, how about that new titanium design? It looks absolutely stunning. And I do like this color a lot. The texture of the frame feels more like it's coated in titanium paint rather than made out of titanium. I still like the way it looks, very mature and professional, very stylish. However, I have some questions about the shape. Remember how we all used to laugh at Apple for the squared off design of the iPhone 12? Call it a brick. Well, the S24 Ultra is literally a thin, beautiful brick. It is super squared off, not that much curvature going on. The front and back glass are absolutely flat and the frame itself has the least amount of curvature I've ever seen in a Samsung phone. And as you might have guessed, these squared edges are not particularly comfortable to hold. The corners just dig into my palms, leaving marks on them. It can be a pain inducing experience, not gonna lie. If there is a phone that should be used only in a case, this is the one. What I absolutely love about this phone is the display. It's just phenomenal, both for consuming content and producing it. And uh, speaking of producing content, let me show you Wondershare Filmora, this video sponsor. Filmora is a great video editing tool from Wondershare. And right now they're rolling out a version 13.1 update, which includes huge improvements to the AI music generation feature. All I need to do is select the mood, theme, genre, duration, and number of tracks, and that's all. Developers have added new themes such as vlogs, travel, gaming, cinematic, and so on. There are also new genres such as pop, beats, funk, and many more. Now I can also select one of three tempo options, low, normal, or high. This amount of variables basically allows create an unlimited number of music tracks for your videos. And the best part is that they all now are commercially available and can be used for commercial purposes. Such a relief, don't you think? After the tracks are generated, I can drag anyone on the timeline. If you're a beginner, generating your own music is much easier than finding one available for free online, faster, easier, and cheaper. Download Filmora for free and get royalty-free music tailored to your liking. Watching movies, uh, reading, everything is super crisp and smooth on the S24 Ultra. Even outdoors, the brightness goes up to 2600 nits, which is absolutely insane. There's also a special anti reflective coating that reduces the amount of glare, making the display feel even brighter. And I don't even need to say anything about color accuracy because Samsung is producing the best displays out there. It's just a perfect display no matter how you look at it. It's always bright, always super colorful, and always durable. And that smoothness that I mentioned, it's not really coming from this display, but more from this system. I feel like Samsung has done something to the animations and the way the system behaves because the Android on the S24 Ultra feels fast, snappy, and responsive. Thanks to short animations, the phone itself feels lightning fast. All apps open almost instantly. I know after a few months, the phone will get a bit slower. That's just how Android works, but the animations are here to stay, that's for sure. Hopefully the latest Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 paired with 12 gigs of RAM will be enough to handle all those seven years of OS updates. The processor is super powerful and doesn't need additional 
little introduction. All apps and games work super fast with no lags or slowdowns. Again, we'll have to wait and see how it all performs in half a year, but after a week, I haven't noticed a single issue with the performance. The same goes about the S Pen, because for me, this little stylus was a revelation of sorts. Right here it says, and you just right in the way. I'm not a huge note-taking guy and the only stylus I have is the Apple Pencil for the iPad, but having a stylus in a phone was a different and very interesting experience for me. The way I use it, it is very superficial. I just write stuff with it, draw doodles, or use it for all those crazy AI features that Samsung has added this year. And I know that you want to hear more about that, but let me just quickly go over the camera experience, because I was pleasantly surprised with it. Hardware-wise, there has been only one notable camera change when compared to the previous S23 Ultra. 10x zoom lens has been replaced by a 5x lens, so it got worse. Not really. The resolution of the camera is higher, 50 megapixels now, which allows Samsung to effortlessly crop images to 10x without losing quality. And these 10x shots are super detailed, very high quality images. Even the 100x zoom is still there, working its magic. I believe that this choice to swap the 10x lens for the 5x was a very clever decision because 5x is a much more practical choice for your average user. But the S24 Ultra also has a 3 X 10 megapixel camera, which seamlessly bridges the gap between 1X and 5X, I'd say that this is one of the most balanced camera systems out there and it all works like a charm. Samsung definitely did something and the way cameras interact with each other. For example, switching between modules is fluent, almost like on the latest iPhone. And as we all know, this is a difficult challenge to pull off, especially for Android phones. As for the photos themselves, the style and processing this year feels more natural than before not so saturated. For me, this is huge because one of the reasons why I didn't really use Samsung phones before was the oversaturation of the images and overprocessing. Now it is all very subtle, almost unnoticeable. Even in low light, the photos are really decent. I have no complaints here, almost. No complaints. However, in terms of videos, I still feel like the latest iPhone is the king. Samsung is really close in terms of quality, clarity, stabilization, and colors, but the iPhone is still at least one year ahead. Yet Samsung is light years ahead of the competition in terms of additional features, and I mean AI. Samsung has come up with so many AI features that need their own separate video to cover, but in the week that I've been using this phone, some of them stood out to me the most. One of such features is Circle to Search. Basically, this feature allows me to search for anything on the screen at any moment. I just long press on the home button at the bottom and then use my finger or the S Pen to circle around the object I want to search for. What impresses me is how accurate the search is. It recognizes the objects with incredible precision, but it's not just searching for objects. I can highlight a few words of text and the AI will explain the meaning of those words in a summarized form. With this feature, I feel like a Terminator scanning motorcycles and clothes and people with just a glance. Another AI feature that blew my mind was instant slow-mo. If I'm watching any video and long press on the screen, the AI will add additional frames and turn the video into slow motion, even if it wasn't a film like one. What's most impressive is that it all happens in real time with no waiting time or processing. I just hold my finger on the video and it becomes slow-mo. Generated slow motion must become standard for all phones, period. But there is one AI feature that I use the most, AI photo editing. If you have ever tried Google's Magic Eraser or Photoshop's Generative Fill, you know what this is about. But if you are new to AI, this feature basically allows me to pick any object in the image and move it, delete it, resize it, and do all sorts of stuff. And AI will fill in all the empty spots that my manipulations create. The AI is very good at identifying objects and their edges, whether it's something small or big like a person. The generated fill itself is really good. Samsung is using Google's tech for it. And sometimes the generated pixels can feel a bit off or look artificial. But if you just want to remove a couple of people from the photograph or move a person closer to you and the background is simple, the AI will have zero issues with doing the job flawlessly. This feature blurs the edge between photography and art and some people might not like it. When does the photo stop being a photo and becomes art? Let's just wait and see where all this AI tech goes.
There, of course, are other AI features such as AI wallpapers, live translation of calls, or keyboard translation, or automatic message translation, or even AI summarization in the notes or in the Samsung browser. There is even a transcript assist which transcribes voice memos on the go with incredible accuracy. But I personally haven't used all these features that much in one week, but I promise to test them out more for my long-term video, so be sure to subscribe to not miss a thing. Oh, and I almost forgot, the battery life is crazy. This phone has a huge 5,000 million power battery inside, and for me it lasts almost two days on a single charge, social media, web browsing, typing notes, reading documents, all this stuff is a piece of cake for this phone. Even on the fast day, by the end of it, I have around 30% charge left, which is really impressive because the iPhone is usually dead by that time. Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra is by far the best Android phone I've used in a long time. At least it's the most refreshing experience to say the least. I haven't been so excited to take my phone out of my pocket and use it in a few years at least. And I still feel like there are so many things in this phone that I don't know about or didn't try. I feel like a kid in a toy store, literally. But should you buy this phone? I think that all the improvements done to this phone and all the additional AI features definitely make it a worthy purchase, but only if you need all that. If you have S22 Ultra or S23 Ultra, there may not be a real reason for you to upgrade. But if you want to be in the forefront of all the AI technologies and smartphones, you are a strong fan of Android and you don't want to buy a Pixel, the Galaxy S24 Ultra might be the phone for you. But if you are a cautious buyer who knows what he needs, this phone might be too much for you. I'm used to iPhones and the amount of stuff this phone lets me do with it is overwhelming to say the least. Right now I don't think that I'm gonna switch to this phone, and maybe you shouldn't either, so if you decide to go for the iPhone, you might want to watch our video with typical buying mistakes. See you there.